<laughs> Unique platform. For a plentiful amount of reasons. The sense of community you get from watching a stream that you can only really feel on Twitch, the art that is created and shared, and the videos that are uploaded by community members. This really is the only platform that can do it the way Twitch has been doing it for a decade now. The sense of creativity from community members is almost trapped in time in this little bubble away from every other social media platform. YouTube used to kind of have this feeling, but it's surely faded since then. The one thing that'll amaze me to this day about Twitch is the music that's created about the streamers again, or just general chat culture. You seriously will not find this kind of quality you anywhere else. An These artists guy. took the concept of just Shut something silly, up. like creating a song for a streamer and created a whole entire subgenre of Twitch content creation. So this is the story of Twitch music. It's good to see you again. Pull up a chair by the hearth. 2014 will be our starting point. Hearthstone just released and this game took off on Twitch. I disagree this with game you. and Forsen's community would be the main reason good old Twitch days. music would even be considered a thing in the first place, to be quite honest. This is also where we will meet Alex the Seal. To many, Alex the Seal is the grandfather of Twitch music and a huge inspiration we'll for many later. of the other artists down the line. Although Twitch, Twitch music, music sounded a little different than what it sounds like today, there was no coined term like calling it Twitch music or anything like that. Instead, this style of music was simply called cancer music. In differential geometry, <laughs> the curvature of a curve is given by Kappa. In Twitch chat, the almighty emote is given by Kappa. <laughs> The videos Alex the Seal uploaded were edited versions of songs with Hearthstone voice lines, streamer voices from clips, <laughs> good and gacha days. snippets. He also used a text-to-speech voice to communicate with the audience before the track started. My mom bought me this new laptop and saying these videos performed <laughs> well would be an understatement. A video uploaded in 2014 about streamers on Twitch to even be sitting at 7.3 million views is an accomplishment in itself. But for the video to also be digging into such a small niche at the time and still perform this well really shows how much of an impact Alex the Seal has had on Twitch as a whole. Alex would continue to upload videos and while he was, two I'll others would be yes. inspired by him and begin uploading their own takes on Alex the Seal's style of videos. Nim and DJ Carl the Dog. Coincidentally enough, both of their earliest uploads include Force and Cancer in the title. Although Nims was first being uploaded in January of 2015, not very long after, the both would begin to slowly deviate and create their own styles. Nim would stay closer to the theme of Hearthstone cancer music with the wildly Old successful Nim. Radio Kappa. You and I were friends, so let's get fisted and let's go on a fuck me. I love all Bro, you are on point. Alex the Seal set the groundwork for an idea like Radio Kappa to thrive. Radio Kappa at its core is the exact same thing Alex was uploading, but as the years went on, Editing, production quality, and the effort from Nim to piece together these episodes became quite evident. I, I, I don't even know what I'm talking about, and I know that I'm right, okay? Everybody that disagrees with me is a fucking- It evolved the entire idea of Twitch music from just being these lightly edited videos with audio snippets to what must have been months or longer of preparation to gather everything needed to create a Radio Kappa. With 15 official episodes and a 16th unofficial installment, Nim and his Radio Kappa will forever be cemented as a part of why Twitch music is so fondly looked back on. Here he comes now. Please give him a warm applause. <laughs> DJ Carl the Dog what? would go a different route. While the content was Hearthstone related, the videos would be much more in tune with Forsen's community. Carl would find huge success with the third upload on his channel, the Smork Song. With a special note in the description. <laughs> This song was made for Forsen. A parody of E40's choices, this video sits at 6.5 <laughs> million views at the time of recording, being his most successful video by quite a bit. But Carl's interesting, as his channel acted like a little hub for super niche Forsen related Twitch jokes for quite a while after his successful video. He even parodied Radio Kappa by creating Radio Gachimuchi, which only ran for two episodes, but they were both recepted very well. A is for ass, 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 ass. B is for boy next door, boy, boy, boy next door. <laughs> His last series was Epic Rap Battles of Twitch Chat, parodying the original ERB. 
Carl would only upload three of these before what I would consider one of the most well-recognized Twitch songs was uploaded. And now you're mad yep, that not, yep, not, was yep, not. There's a fucking plap on top of the points list. This is free entertainment, so why should we pay? Fuck, fuck the plaps. Fuck 203A. On May 26th, 2016, I'm Just a Memer was uploaded, <laughs> sitting at 1.9 million views. This song is easily in the top three most influential Twitch songs for the platform as a whole. Seeing how both Nim and DJ Carl the Dog took what they knew about the old Hearthstone cancer music and either evolved <laughs> on that concept of it or took it a totally different route with creating their own Twitch songs is fascinating to see, especially nowadays as you can treat both their channels like archives, seeing what kind of videos they experimented with and then following their uploads up until the very last one. Alex the Seal, Nim, and DJ Carl the Dog. All three who I would consider the grandfathers of Twitch music, with of course Alex being the great grandfather. But I can't help feel like I'm missing someone. Who would this one person be? Let's go back just a few moments in the mom. past. And now you're mad that your resub was missed. There's a fucking plap on top of the points list. This is free entertainment, so why should we pay? Fuck, fuck the plaps. Fuck 203A. That's me. 203A. Quite the mysterious man. I assumed he started uploading in 2016, but I was Ooh. very, very wrong. His channel was seemingly nuked, forcing him to re-upload and create an archive channel. GMT kids. Gone. Comfortably spanked. Gone. 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 203A's artistic take on Twitch music with custom animations and an almost psychedelic editing style was so different it caught me off guard. The song choices he parodied. Oh, this is the best one. I can love this one. Or the tracks he uploaded to his channel were all for the most part slower and sad songs. Force and Buys would be 203A's most popular song with 1 million views at the time of recording. <laughs> Recently, 203A's tracks have become much more upbeat with Time to Throw PogChamp and his most recent upload being a Bat Chess song. Wow! That's freaking epic! 203A might have been a Twitch <laughs> music creator that you didn't know of, but you just put two and two together after hearing Force and Buys. <laughs> DJ... Oh my fucking... Are you serious? Fortnite Gamer Twitch is another character. Your mom! <laughs> A mixture of everything and absolutely meant to be a Twitch music creator back then. I'm not too sure if he uploaded and deleted videos, but Mr. Fortnite Gamer's first ever upload is also his most successful video. Uploaded on October 9th, 2018, For San is sitting at 1 million views. For San. Da, da. The most interesting thing about DJ FGT is the stellar production on some of the tracks. Soy O Boy's production is just so incredibly great for a Twitch track. <laughs> this synth wave or retro wave, I don't even know what to call it, just that Dr. Disrespect kind of music is so well made and just flat out impressive. I believe yeah, the bro. biggest draw to Mr. Fortnite Gamer's Twitch <laughs> music is that a majority of the songs are blatantly created to generate chat spam. He is one of the newer creators and being able to look back and see what works and what doesn't Not is irrelevant. such an advantage for someone in his space. Of course, the production behind the songs also play a key part into why people come back. DJ Fortnite Gamer Twitch is the entire embodiment of what the past four artists were doing, but it was fine-tuned to create some new age classics in regards to Twitch songs. Talking about Twitch rap, I'm talking about specific people who solely made tracks for streamers. 2017 will be our starting point for Twitch rap. The extreme popularity yes. of diss tracks at the time, it would be a given that there were going to be some songs created dissing streamers. Garbage. The most memorable victim of these diss tracks would be none other than Tyler1, and the two sending these shots would be Twisted Clone and Geo. Twisted Clone would send out four diss tracks to Tyler before the two would collaborate on their most successful video. Stretch marks on your fucking body like you win. All rap. Jumbo Flex is the most recent. Songs. The next four artists I would consider to be general Twitch music creators. They don't belong to a specific community nowadays, 
Maybe they did back then, but not only until they shifted their songs to be into a more broad Twitch sphere did they see major success. Sorty Way started making songs poking fun at Soda Poppin' all the way back in 2014, so he actually is one of the first Twitch music creators, creating short little jingles revolving around Soda and his community. The only thing he drinks is Coca-Cola, someday soon he'll probably die, he's Coke Poppin', Coke Poppin', Dead Poppin'. Feels bad, man. third upload would be his first successful Twitch song, a parody of In the Hall of Mountain King. The song used soda emotes and global Twitch emotes as the lyrics, and it's sitting at 542,000 views at the time uh, of recording. Forehead pop champ Remix featuring and Greek clips. Where's God? With all that history, surely there will be so many people ready to take up the torch and begin their own Twitch God music shit. journey. Well, not so much. There really only are four or so people who I would consider up next. Rose Sauce Studios began uploading original Twitch songs in 2019 with a track named Marbles at 2.43 a.m. A very indie gorilla's is really what music have always been switched over to. What? Embarrassed by it, but uh, named song. That's kind of weird. I got you.